Hello, it's Koi, and welcome to the Eclectic Cottage. And welcome to Christmas in July Latin style. And I think we're going to, you know, continue working on our pages a little bit. Um, we've added a couple pockets and, and a flip by now. We have a pocket, we have a little trim here. We have some trim here in our pocket. I did add um, a little of the red and white trim. I had I had this one piece left that wasn't, uh, you know, from the original roll. So I've added that and I wanna add um, this to, a, you know, to both sides of a page in both of the other um, signatures as well. And here's the other side of that. I really like that, that looks cute. It looks cute on the, um, you know, sticking out on the edges. And what do we do in this one so far? We have, okay, we added our flip with our girl and we added this red lace, which I only had that one piece. I don't have, I didn't have a piece for each side. So maybe we'll put something on the other side. And I'm thinking maybe we'll add a little tab here, you know, to pull, to pull that out. As a matter of fact, we're gonna do that first. So I'll leave, I'll take this out and we'll get her tab on. And on this one, we've added a pocket here with the dolls. Remember this was the um, radish, sal <laughs> radish salad recipe. And I did add um, a little lace trim pocket with uh, these beautiful little Christmas trees, like flocked Christmas trees on it. I don't know if you can see that, but it's very pretty. And it's on there pretty strong. It's pretty strong. Um, I haven't tried it out or anything. Let's see. Yeah, it'll hold, it'll, it'll make a nice pocket. It'll hold something in there nice. And it added a little a little bling to the uh, edge of the paper. And I wanna put some gold trim like this in the other two, uh, in the other two signatures as well. So I pulled out, this was the, um, this was the ribbon with the Christmas trees on it. It's just so pretty. I don't know how much snow there is. Alexa, how much snow, how often does it snow in Mexico? No snow is expected tonight. Alexa. How long does it, how often does it snow in Mexico City? No snow is expected okay, in Mexico Alexa. City, Mexico tonight. Okay. All right. I don't know if it snows much there. I don't guess, especially in the middle of heat wave in the summertime. Okay. And then I'm going to put this, which is really pretty and it's not Christmassy. Um, well, not too Christmassy. The gold kind of blingy and Christmassy. And then I have this roll, which is you know, also green and will hang over the edge of the page to add this effect. I really like, I really like the way that looks on the edge. I don't know if you can see it well or not. All right, we'll do that. And then I have, you know, this uh, roll of red that I'll put in the other two signatures. And let's see if we can get some of that done. Um, first thing I want to do is put a little tab on our pull out flip and just something simple how about this um, flocked velvet Let me just put this little red velvet tab on here nothing special just but it is just a little added touch and it is velvet so it does have you know, a nice new texture that we're introducing to the book. Where are we gonna put it down here? Well, yes, I, whoa. Oh. Yes, I think we will put it right there.
All right, this will be a simple. A nice new texture. Be careful that I don't put it in the wrong place on her face or something. I know you guys probably see me putting paint and wiping glue off my fingers onto this uh, tabletop, but you know, it is a canvas, it's a uh, canvas paper, a huge piece of canvas paper that I have taped down to the desk and I I use it as my palette, my paint palette, or I use it for, you know, whatever I need. And this is a red, it's a red table underneath there. So it protects uh, the surface. And I, I've never used a red table for anything besides, you know, art room table anyway. Okay, I like that. Look, that gives a little, a little thing right there. And that way you open this up and you have something to grab onto to open her up and to pull this out. All right, we'll consider her pretty much done until December when we start loading photos or memorabilia or whatever from our month of December. All right, get her back in there where she belongs. I don't remember where she was, but we'll put her, we'll put her right here. Okay, now, trims. I like to be able to remove when I'm working on my pages, at least until all the pockets and, and such are in there. I like to be able to remove my pages. Um, so I just put the elastic uh, to hold the signatures together so I can remove you know, the papers when I'm working on them individually. And to me, that just, you know, makes things a little bit easier. All right, so this signature already has the gold trim. Now let's put a gold trim on the other two signatures. Here's the green one. Let's take a page that will... We could do it on, on this music page or here that's cute it doesn't make the world's best pocket but it is a little tuck a little, a little place to you know to put things and yeah, I think that green page at the end what do you think Winner, winner, chicken dinner. All right, I'm just going to put a little tiny mark here. On where I want to glue up to. And I'm just going to use our glitter glue. Should do fine. It's not that heavy of a, a fabric. It's just ribbon. Let's see if I can see my mark. There it is.
All right, and I want to make sure that the gold is hanging off the page just a little bit. Hoping that line doesn't stay there once it dries. We'll see. If it does, we'll we'll cover it up with something, maybe a little piece of gold. for the job, Corey, the right tool for the job. This had wire, this ribbon had wire in it. I took the wire out. All right, that overhangs just enough to add a little bling bling. Now the other side. All right, so tell me how you're doing. Tell me what, what's going on on your, uh, on your desk. Are you just watching, which is fine? Or are you um, planning a new craft project? Are you working on finishing something up? I'd be interested to know. I really like the way that we're, you know, building a little community here. Louise, I want to say hi to Louise, a special hello, and I hope you're um, making some progress on your Feliz Navidad uh, Christmas in July. And I know that I think she's called 4 a.m. Junk Journaler. She is working on a Christmas in July project, and hers is a little different. Hers is more German, uh, and it is, I can't remember the name of the bug tie, um, but there is a German thing, devilish type thing, that tries to seal Christmas or something, like the Grinch, I don't know. I have to, uh, I have to, I can't really speak on it. I, I shouldn't be speaking on it at all because I, I am not, uh, that knowledgeable, knowledgeable, but I did, um, read her, uh, I did listen to her channel today and she said she's going to do, um, whatever his name was versus Santa Claus and... I subscribe. I went ahead and subscribed to her channel so I can keep an eye on that and see exactly what's going on. Some German tradition. We'll talk about that a little bit more when I understand it a little bit more. I should not have even probably mentioned it. Um, 4 a.m. journaler, if you're if you're here, do you want to describe it for us a little bit? That would be nice. Uh, I didn't mean to make a mess out of uh, describing it. But I do plan on keeping an eye on you and, you know, see what's going on with your Christmas in July over there on your channel. It's funny how there's, you know, all these, you know, all the different um, traditions in different parts of the world. And I'm not 100% sure what 
you know, what the Mexican traditions are. You know, from what I understand, it's pretty much like, uh, you know, Santa Claus is pretty much like, um, like he is any, you know, anywhere else, a jolly old man in a red suit, bringing gifts to all the good little girls and boys. If any of you are Mexican, uh oh, I didn't, I didn't put that on the edge of the page as much as I would have liked to. Can I get that off there? No. Oh well. Let me put it back on. Okay, it's okay. It's okay. And depending on how this ends up drying, this side was already, you know, a little bit like this. But depends on how this ends up drying in the long run. I may just put a little strip of gold there, um, you know, where it's showing through on on that lightest part of the green. All right. <sighs> okay. I was jibber jabbering about uh, German traditions and didn't get enough of the gold overhanging uh, the page, which is a little disappointing, but also not the end of the world. I have to pay more attention. I'm not going to say I'll quit jibber jabbing, jibber jabbering because I don't have that in me. <laughs> okay, so that's that signature. And then this one, let's pay attention and get the gold hanging over the edge a little bit so we're not disappointed again. This is so pretty, isn't it pretty? That's why I say all the cool stuff lives in with the Christmas uh, supplies. And what page, what kind of page will that go well on? That could go anywhere. Oh, it's really pretty. This is a very short page. I don't want that. How about on that golden page? Okay. I can really cut that pretty much. I cut that a little longer than intended, I think. So let's get it trimmed down to more reasonable size. And we'll put it on this gold, marbled gold page. I think this is a um, a background page from the gra from the graphics fairy. Uh, And this is the first time I've used it. It's been hiding in my stash. All right. Let's trim this off a little bit. Okay, I don't think I'm going to be going to, um, <sighs> the kids, my son invited me to come watch fireworks tonight. I don't think I'm going to. We've had thunderstorms and stuff today. It's going to be wet out there, and I just don't think that I'm going to plan to do that. Chi-Chi, my pup, 
she's not going to be a fan. She does not like fireworks or thunder very much at all. It's a thing for her. Okay, that's hanging it over just perfect. Can you see it? cut the longer than let's cut off this end it's more plain got a little quiet here sometimes it's hard to um to talk and think and craft all at the same time um and actually i was a little concerned about being able to do to do that from the start as and it seems like it's a little easier than i thought it might be except when it's not. I think that's why sometimes there's a little pause in between words because I'm thinking about what comes next with the crafting and trying to figure out, I mean, there's not really a plan. It's not like I come in here and there's a plan on, you know, on what I'm gonna do and that I've already done it and it's just, you know, sitting here waiting to plop down. I have to think for a minute about what it is I want to do and then how I'm going to do it. So that may change as um, my experience grows. We'll see. We may be, you know, maybe you'll, um, you'll get here and everything will be all lined up and I'll have a list of all the, the supplies that you need to go grab in order to uh, craft along. I don't know. That's kind of hard to uh, imagine that that's going to happen, but it could. You never know. Right now, I really appreciate you guys being here uh, through my these first 100 videos because I'm just kind of winging it, playing it by ear and doing whatever feels right at the moment. And I'm learning. It's a learning experience. I'm trying to figure out the whole YouTube. Every day you learn something new. Um, so, for those of you that keep showing up, thank you. For those of you who show up and leave a comment and hit the like button, thank you. Thank you. Double time. Because it's nice. I haven't figured out how to see who has subscribed. I know there's a way to see it somewhere. I don't know if you just can't see it when you have so few subscribers, but I haven't figured out where the um, the recent subscriber section is located in the YouTube studio. And I imagine, you know, that I'll get that figured out because it would be nice to know um, who the subscribers are and who the people are that, you know, keep coming back, showing up every day. I know it's somebody. Uh, and I do have, I do have some folks that, um, text messaged me to let me know they were here. Um, I think that people like my mother doesn't know how to leave a comment. She watches from her television set. So I don't even know. And I don't know anything about watching, you know, watching from, uh, from TV. I don't know if it's even possible to leave a comment, um, you know, if you're watching from TV, but I do know that she's here and she watches. Hi, mom. <laughs> My granddaughter 
One of my granddaughters says that she watches. I'm Ailey Rain. Marlia does not have YouTube yet on on her phone. Maylee's 13 and Marlia's 11. So maybe in two more years, Marlia will have YouTube also. Um, they're pretty responsible young ladies and their parents have uh, given them the okay. They don't have social media. They don't have Facebook or anything like that, but they do. Maylee does have access to YouTube and she's an artist. Maylee's an artist. It runs in the family. She uses it a lot for, you know, for searching things for her art. She's been making, she's been making costumes. She's, um, I think cosplay, they call it cosplay. Uh, and she's been making costumes, which is really cute. Okay, I like it. Look at that. That one's just right. So let's get it back here into its spot. And how are we doing on time? We still we still have time maybe to put the red trim in the ex in the other two signatures. This one already has it. And we can get the red trim into these two signatures. It feels like this signature has ended up with an extra page, unless it's because this thing is so bulky. I feel like I might have added a page that went somewhere else into this signature. And I'm sure that eventually I'll get that all straightened out. The pages have a way of traveling. They have a way of moving around. Um, you know, over the month. I'll probably be working on this journal all month. And I'm excited at the thought of being able to, to have it all done and ready for, um, you know, for doing December daily in December. Okay. I know there's an end somewhere. There's probably a key to, um, you know, those of you that work with, you know, fabric and lace and such, um, you probably know that oh, it definitely isn't that. Know the key to uh, unwinding things, where they start and where they end. Uh, <laughs> The worst thing for me is um, the little uh, embroidery thread. My embroidery thread, I just, I, oh, this is the thing that holds it in, all right? My embroidery, I make a mess with my embroidery thread every time. I know there's a key to it. There's a special um, way to unravel it where it doesn't get so messy, but I knew what it was. And I forgot what it was. So if any of you are needle workers, you do a lot of embroidery or cross stitch or whatever, and you would like to leave that clue in the comments, I would appreciate it. And if not, I'm sure that eventually somebody will mention it. Somebody will know exactly what to do because there is a key. And I see everybody else, when they unravel theirs, it looks all cute and, you know, organized. Mine, when I start unraveling my thread, it just all gets hung up and makes a mess. It makes a mess. Anybody else? Anybody else have that problem? I know I'm not the only one. I've, you know, I've heard other people complain about that as well. So it's not just me, and I'm not afraid that it's just me, but I know there's a, a key. I remember finding out several years ago what the key was. Someone said it. I tried it, and then whatever project I was working on, it worked like a dream. 
you know, on on all the thread, had no problem. But now, when I try to um, remember what it was, I have no clue. I guess I could Google it, but I I haven't got that far. That's not where I'm at right now. All right, for this, I'll use Fabri-Tac. This has a little, a let see how it's like elasticy. This is a little bit different than the ribbon that we were laying down before. For this, we'll use Fabri-Tac. All right, I think adding trim like this um, and adding the few pockets that we've added today does kind of uh, give me a little bit of, you know, a feeling like it's starting to become my journal, my pages, my papers. It's, you know, kind of hard when you first get started and you're staring at that blank page of crisp papers fresh off the printer. Okay. Try to get this on here nice and straight and make sure the little ruffles hanging over the edge. Fabri-Tac gives you a little more grace than the art glitter glue does. You can, you have a little bit of time to, oh, sorry, I really try hard not to, to bump the camera and send you guys bouncing around. Yes, yes, yes. So cute. I got this from a, um, a thrift store and I took the red ones because I was working on a, um, cookbook journal which still needs a lot of work and I probably won't be able to do that until um, after December but it went with and they had some navy blue you know the navy blue check just like this and I passed up on that just I don't know how come I didn't just take that one also I think maybe you know what was it for a dollar for the whole roll and there were two rolls of that. I should have taken them them also, but I didn't. Okay. I usually wait until the end to put my trims on the page, and I'm often sorry that I didn't do it sooner because now you've got all the pockets and all the stuff in the way. Um, and I think if you do the trim first, and this is the first time I'm trying it. I mean, it's not like this is my habit yet or anything, but I think if you do it early, start adding some of the trim early, um, it'll be better to get it down there because then you know how far to put your, you know, where to put the pockets and where to put the tucks and where to put the other things that are going on the page and still have room for the trim. So that's my theory. I'll let you know how I feel about it uh, towards the end of the month. And hopefully it works out great and starts to become my new habit. The way I usually work, I, I usually start with the cover. And lately, on the last two journals, I have not started with the cover first. On the last two journals, I've started with the, the paper. The inspiration has come from, you know, I bet at... Um, at to Casa de Papel, her pages, her bright, vivid colors. Have any of you been to her uh, her Etsy store? Her pages are just so bright, so cheerful, and so colorful. I love them so much, and uh, they're very inspiring, and they're very unique. If you take a look around, and if you're doing a Feliz Navidad uh, Christmas in July book, you're probably noticing there's not a lot available with the Mexican theme out there. Feliz Navidad 
there's not necessarily a lot of that going on out there. So she's kind of, you know, she kind of has something not completely unique. I'm not saying no one else does it, but you know, she is one of the few that do. And she does it so well. Okay. All right, there's that one. And let's pick a page in here to do the red and white on. We could do it on the red page. No, not enough contrast. We can do this pink page. No, even less contrast. this neutral color page or on this green. Does that look Christmassy? All right, this is our winner. Probably 90% of all of my um, junk journaling supplies, besides glue and, you know, and paint and, you know, consumables, besides that, most all of everything I have comes from thrifting. I don't really buy new things. I recycle the old. which although these, you know, the journals might not really be junk journals, junk journals originally were um, completely made out of junk, things that ordinarily would have got thrown away. So I don't think, consider this lace or, you know, the things that we're using necessarily something that would have got thrown away. And I do use digitals in mine. So theoretically, you know, the use of the word junk journal is a little bit, uh, you know, open to interpretation, I guess. Um, I only call it junk journal because everybody knows what that is. Otherwise, I would call it eclectic journal, you know, instead of junk journals. Um, but junk journaling is a term that's loosely used to describe these journals that we put together using junk, a lot of it's junk, um, junk mail um, and such, uh, but a lot of it is, you know, is digitals that are printed and uh, people use scrapbook paper, which isn't junk and, um, you know, things, but all my buttons and my laces and fabrics and all of that are thrifted. So it was junk to somebody at one time. One man's junk is another man's treasure. I consider them treasures. talk to my granddaughters on the phone 
last night. Both of them, they were together hanging out. They, mom and dad were putting the baby to bed and um, they were asking about my YouTube channel and Marlia, the 11 year old, decided she was going to give me some advice. And <laughs> she's so cute. That kid is so cute. I love her so much. She said, Grandma, you got to do shorts. You got to do shorts. Because when people are scrolling through, sometimes they don't want to watch the long thing. But they have to watch the short. It's only short. So that was one thing. And then she said, and don't forget to, to say... Um, hit the subscribe button, hit the like, hit the, uh, uh, leave a comment, comment, like, and subscribe. That was her advice. There you go. From the mouth of babes. And then she said, when you become famous, I'll become, she said something that was so funny. I can't remember exactly what it was. I wish I would remember. She said, when you become famous, that means I'll become famous. And, you know, we were just joking around. It was late at night. And I said, yes, you will. You will be so famous that the paparazzi will be following you. You won't even be able to, to come out in public without having the paparazzi follow you. And her mind just went on and on. And she was thinking of all of these things that she would be able to do when she became famous. I love her. They don't stay little long, do they? They're so sweet with their baby brother. The baby brother is Abel. Um, my son-in-law, his name is, is Cam. His name is uh, Adam Cameron. So we named, they named the baby Abel, which in, you know, biblically is the son of Adam. So his name is Abel and he is a hum dinger and he's at that cute age where you know he just turned one and he's starting to learn something new every single day and his sisters are just so fabulous with him and they will send me videos today they sent a video of um of him he had a lion in his hand and his sister had the phone and he brought his lion up to the phone and he says roar roar he was raised one years old. He's one year old. He's roaring with his little lion at the phone. It was sweet. All right. Let's get these tucked back in where they belong and see where we stand. I like it. It's starting to, to get fluffy and starting to feel like a you know, like it may become a journal. Let's get this one back in. It's tucked into its spot. Oh, sorry. I don't mean to, uh, to shake y'all up. Okay. Right, this is definitely not the front page. The front page. This does not belong right there. Put you in here. Okay, that's cute. How does it look? We're coming along. Right, I think that is going to do it for me today. Thank all of you for, for being here and through for uh, sitting through, listening to the um, idle chit chat while we are uh, getting our, you know, getting our pages ready to, you know, to add. We'll be adding a few more um, pockets and tucks and flips and belly bands and such. And then we'll start working on, um, you know, on ephemera, on tags and and journaling cards and, you know, spots to 
uh, to do some journals, things to stick into the pockets. And um, keep coming back. Hit the subscribe button. You'll get notified when there's new content. I am trying to work my way through my first hundred videos. So the content, um, you know, the, the postings are probably going to be pretty regular. Um, you know, I'm not calling it the hundred day project or anything, but they'll probably be pretty regular through the first hundred, uh, videos so that I can, you know, get my feet wet and get used to the way things, uh, work and, um, you know, be better, you know, be able to be bring you better information, better content and, um, you know, start building our little community here. So with all that said, I will say thank you again. Goodbye. Enjoy the rest of your 4th of July. If you're watching the fireworks, stay safe and I will see you real soon.